Good morning, hockey fans. Good afternoon for some of you out there on the East Coast. I'm Chris Durrell. I'm here for RotoPros.com to bring my daily fantasy NHL breakdown for Thursday, March 7th. Before I get into that, uh, if you're not a member of RotoPros yet, get over to RotoPros.com. Top right-hand corner, click that sign-up button, and with any weekly, monthly, or yearly subscription, you're going to get a free trial to come in and check out what we got. So our community chat is the number one thing that we really push. Um, we do some one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's a great place where we have channels set up for hockey news, hockey talk, um, you know, same thing for almost every sport. And we do cover a ton of sports, NFL, NHL, NBA, NASCAR, MLB, um, pretty much anything with DFS, um, we've been trying to cover and get someone uh, dedicated to that sport. Um, so get over to Rotor Pros now, and you won't be disappointed. With that, let's jump into this week's picks. So tonight in the NHL, we've got 11 games. Um, what I'm going to do here is kind of go over um, some of my core plays. I'm not going to go every single game. Just kind of drags on, makes for a long video. So I just want to kind of go over a few of my core plays tonight. Um, we're going to start off by just looking at the slate. Like I said, it's an 11-game slate, and we're going to be using my NHL cheat sheet. You can grab a copy of that in the community chat, on Twitter, um, linked in the articles, pretty much anywhere. So it's, it's really not that hard to find uh, and download the sheet. And if you want to make a copy so that you can sort and maybe – you know, doing some research, you want to look at some stats, you want to be able to sort columns and that sort of thing, you can make a copy of this because right now it's only view only. So you're going to want to go up to file, make a copy, um, name it whatever you want, and then just click OK, and it's going to give you an editable version of the sheet. So the first tab you're going to see is the matchups tab. Like I said, there's 11 games here. The over-unders, there's only three of those 11 games with, an, with a five and a half total. So there's going to be some high scoring again tonight, so we're going to be looking for some upside even in cash games. It's kind of been the theme this season. Last year was more of a balanced approach when looking at cash games. Guys with high shot volume, block volume, that sort of thing when looking at defense. This year's a little bit different as we do need a ton of upside. So I've been finding a lot of stars and scrub strategies. Um, and not so much scrubs, but more your your low end value plays that are getting you know run on either top line, um, but haven't been priced accordingly yet. Those are the kind of guys you got to find more of this season to be able to get a couple, two or three studs at forward who are you know got that three four point upside any given night. So, gonna see a lot of these high totals moving forward. The biggest ones Buffalo Chicago, um, and with that I'm just gonna jump right into the goalies and a few of my favorites tonight. <clears throat> First of all is Andrew Vasilevsky. Uh, Tampa Bay is a minus 250 home favorite tonight. Like him a little bit more on DraftKings where he's the fifth most expensive goalie. Um, he's 9,800 on FanDuel, so it's a little bit closer, a little bit tougher of a decision there. But he has just been absolutely amazing lately. Uh, leads the league with a 931 save percentage right now. He's only got... He's got 31 wins in there as well. 10-0 in his last, as you can see here, in his last 10 games, 943 save percentage, two shutouts, kind of looking at that game log. He is facing 30-plus shots a game, um, so we do have that. So that helps helps our floor, but it also gives us a ton of upside. So he's a, he's a player I'll be looking at in all formats tonight. And then second is Thomas Grice. He'll be someone I'll be looking at a little bit more. I'd rather just go with Vasilevsky at home. Um, as a big favorite tonight on DraftKings. But on FanDuel, it's a little bit tougher decision. Like I said, Vasilevsky's 9,800. Grice is down. Just go back to the cheat sheet here for a second. Yeah, 8,200. So you got a $1,600 gap there between the two, which brings Grice into play most definitely. He took over for Leonard last game. Leonard got hurt in the game. Uh, they got blown out by Ottawa. So this is a home at home. Um, not blown up by Ottawa, but the goalies give up four goals against Ottawa, so it wasn't really a good show, and they ended up winning that game anyway. But they'll be going to Grice tonight because uh, there's no injury word yet on Leonard there. So um, Grice has been good, and Leonard, they've kind of split time this season. They're both sitting around a 928, 930, so they're right behind Vasilevsky and save percentage for the season. And going back and forth the way they have in split time keeps both of them fresh. So um, even though they are on the road tonight, they're facing an Ottawa team that's averaging like 1.6 goals per game since they first sat Matt Duchesne uh, before they traded him. Um, since the trade deadline, I believe they've been shut out three times as well in that time. So not really worried about last game's high scoring affair. I think, you know, even if Ottawa gets two goals tonight, takes 35 shots. I think Grice definitely pays off his value, uh, especially in cash games, if he gets the win over on FanDuel. So definitely looking at him. And then for GPP tonight, I like uh, Koskinen for Edmonton going up against Vancouver. Um, big favorites there. He's very, very cheap on FanDuel. And he's actually been very good lately as well. 
um, helping the Oilers get back in. I believe they're only six points out of a playoff spot at this moment uh, going into tonight. So they're still in the playoff race, which that's not something I thought I I would say uh, earlier in the season there. So, um, But, yeah, Koskinen has been very good. He's won three straight, faced 30-plus shots in that time. I believe he's faced um, – he's made about 100 saves here and 105 shots. So he's been very good lately, and he faces a Vancouver team. It's just not that scary offensively outside of uh, Pedersen and Bosser there. So, or Besser, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But I'm not really worried about them, Vancouver, playing on the road. I do like Edmonton and Koskinen at home. And the salary relief helps you get to some of the top forwards that we're going to talk about here very shortly. At the center position, just learned that uh, Dylan Larkin's going to be out tonight. He was one of my favorites. As you can see, he's a little bit cheaper on DraftKings and FanDuel. He's 12th and 13th in pricing, but he's out tonight, so that puts a lot of emphasis for me um, on Jonathan Taves at home versus Buffalo in that mid-7K range. He centers the top line with Patrick Kane. He's been very good lately as well. Jump over to centers. Look at Taves' game log here. What he does give you is shot volume, upside with points. He skates alongside Kane and faces a Buffalo team that has really struggled. I believe 10 of their last 16 games, they've given up four or more goals in those. So they've given up a ton of goals. They've not been very great defensively lately. And like I said, Taves kind of checks all the boxes tonight. And he's a little bit cheaper, allowing you to go a little bit more balanced in cash games and also helping you to get to uh, you know a full lines or power play stack in GPPs. Jack Eichel on the other side. I definitely like him. His shot volume is just amazing looking at his season numbers. He's averaging 11.8 shots per 60, 18.7 Corsi per 60, and he's got 72 points, having a career year out there. He's been hot lately, and Chicago hasn't been great defensively. That's you know They've been in a ton of high-scoring games, and with Jack Eichel's shot volume, upside, matchup, again, I think that might be my core centers for tonight is Eichel and Taves. If you do want to go cheaper, um, you maybe want to try and get in Kucherov and Kane in your cash lineups tonight. I don't mind going with Brock Nelson. Um, the, the numbers on the season are a little bit below average when looking at that shot volume, but he, he gets an elite matchup against Ottawa's, I think they're 30th in defense right now, allowing about 3.7 goals per game. So I definitely like going Brock there and lately his his shot volume has been up 5-4-3-2 in his last four games there so he is getting some shot volume lately skates on that top line top power play unit and gets an elite matchup and he's very cheap so he's going to allow you you know even if you want to go up with a Crosby um, I haven't got him marked off yet just because he's he's a little more expensive than I like to spend up for tonight at the center position especially with Eichel and Taves but if you did want to go that route um, going down again in a value guy like Nelson definitely helps out and the same with Krejci. His shot volume isn't great either, but he comes cheap. He's in a great matchup, and the, he, him and DeBrusque have just been playing so excellent as Boston secondary scorers lately, so I'm not really worried about that shot volume just with his price and wanting to maybe pay up for uh, uh, McCain and Kucherov in the same lineup possibly tonight. Moving on to winger, I just mentioned them. Kane and Kucherov can't go wrong with either of them. They've both been red hot. We are, you know, right around, uh, we'll just go look here, around 20 points over their last 10 games. So they're averaging like two points per game lately. Kane's cooled off a bit since his 20 game streak. Point streak has ended, but he's got 53 shots in his last 10 games. Not worried about it in this elite matchup versus Buffalo. Same thing I talked about with Taves. And then Kucherov has just been phenomenal. 20 points, there we go, in his last 10 games. 39 shots on goal. Nine points on the power play, skating over 20 minutes, so he just checks all the boxes as well. I lean Kane tonight slightly just because of the matchup, and we'll just go look at that here quick. Buffalo's 23rd on defense, and like I mentioned, they've been even worse lately. Minnesota is 12th in defense, so just outside the top 10, and they've been a lot better lately. So just kind of looking at those matchups and the trends of those teams that they're facing, I would go Kane slightly over Kucherov, especially on FanDuel where he's $200 cheaper tonight. But if he did need the $300 savings, I, I definitely wouldn't argue with if you went Kucherov over Kane on DraftKings. Sticking with Chicago, uh, Alex Dabrinkit, he skates on the second line um, with Dylan Strom, but he does join Kane and Taves on the top power play unit, and he has just been awesome lately. So that mid-6K range, low-7K range price tags, definitely not worried about Excellent cash game play. He's a little over average when looking at his shot volume. Um, not really too worried about that just because, again, looking at the matchup and all that he's done lately. We'll just bring up his game log, have a quick look at that. 12 points last 10 games, 29 shots on goal, 5 points on the power play, and he's getting over 18 minutes 
Um, a lot of that, you know, boost in, in uh, minutes, being that he's on the second line, does come with that top power play unit, which has been just deadly lately. So he's going to be a core play for me tonight, especially in cash games. I'll be doing some GPP stacks with Kane to Brinkett and Taves as well. It's probably going to be chalky, and there are some other directions that we can go to get some lower ownership tonight. We'll talk about that uh, here shortly. Jeff Skinner, um, talking about two-man stacks. I love doing that for cash games, going to two high high floor players that can maybe they're not skated on the same line but like to brink it and Kane but they join each other in the top power play unit with Jeff Skinner he does skate with Jack Eichel on that top line he's been very good in Buffalo this season doesn't have quite the shot volume when, it, when looking at Corsi at that 16.9 not really sustainable for that 10.7 shots but he's probably in the you know the 10.1 10.2 shots per 60 range you know when it all levels out with uh, looking at his Corsi numbers but still above average so I'm not worried about the shot volume at all great matchup going up against Chicago so this is definitely a game we're going to be targeting tonight it looks like it could be one of the most high scoring he gives you 36 shots on goal in his last 10 games so that's that's positive to see from Skinner going a bit cheaper not as high on him right now as I was um, when Larkin was back in the lineup. Uh, Mantha and Larkin are another one of my favorite two-man stacks to run in cash games. I do like Mantha. I think he's going to get more volume tonight. Um, Mid-5K range player on both sides. He's playing lately more like a 6K plus player. So maybe want to jump on that. It's a good matchup against the Rangers tonight. And just looking at his last games, he's actually been, you know, from a shot volume perspective, a little bit better than Larkin. 35 shots in his last 10 games. He's added 12 points, four on the power play and skating over 18 minutes. So, again, he checks all the boxes and at his price tag makes a great cash play. Jake DeBrusque, I also like that he's going to be a core play for me. Um, a little bit more on DraftKings, a little more expensive on FanDuel. I think I'd rather just go and save um, the $600 and go with Mantha if I had to. But uh, DeBrusca is definitely an option if you've got that money to spend. Talked about him with Krejci. They've been awesome on the second line. And DeBrusca has also been jumping up and, and going with uh, Bergeron and Marchand on the top power play unit there as well. Just been playing really good lately. 15 points in his last 10 games. 29 shots on goal. 5 points on the power play. Only 16 minutes of ice time. So that's a little bit less. But again, he's a little bit cheaper. So I'm not really worried about it in a great matchup against Florida. Boston's at home tonight. And then a couple value guys I'm looking at. Uh, I always look at Josh Anderson. His price stays down because he skates on the third line, second power play unit. Pittsburgh hasn't been great defensively at home. He does get some nice shot volume for a guy of his price, 9.8 shots per 60, 16.8. Corsi 4 per 60. Josh Bailey, probably more for GPP formats. I like that he's cheap, but again, it's he skates with Brock Nelson on the top line, and they get an elite matchup versus Ottawa tonight. Danton Heenan skates on the top line with Marchand and Bergeron, or has been, uh, whether he'll be there tonight or not. He's been a little bit down there, but a value play. I do like others better, so it's probably more of a, um, if he's going to be up there on the top line with those guys, I'm going to run a GPP stack with Boston, with Heenan in there. And then Tyler Bertuzzi, he, can, he has been skating with Mantha and Larkin. With Larkin out, I don't know what they're going to be doing with their lines, but if he sticks with Mantha, um, I do like Mantha in cash games, like I said. And then for GBPs, if you want to stack Detroit, I like adding Tyler Bertuzzi in there. Moving on to the defensive position. Burns and Latang are currently day-to-day. -day. I want to hear more on their status before I go ahead and declare uh, anything with them. So I will be turning to Mark Giordano, who is cheaper than both of those guys. He's been down a bit lately, but he does provide shots, blocks, ice time, um, he skates power play, penalty kill. He gives you upside with points as well, and he's on a very good Calgary team and facing Arizona. The only problem with him tonight, looking at Calgary, is they're playing on a back-to-back -back in third and four on the road. Um, but with those other guys out, I just kind of propped him up as the top defenseman tonight. Victor Hedman for GPPs. Um, Ryan Pulock's price continues to stay down on FanDuel 4,300, so he's going to be a core play for me over there. I've talked about him quite a bit this season. He gives you that combination of shots and blocks, which gives you a high floor. He's also got 31 points on the season, skating over 22 minutes per game. So definitely looking at him as a core play on FanDuel. Brent Seabrook is probably my favorite defenseman for cash games on this entire slate. 5,100 on DK, 4,600 on FanDuel. So right there in that mid-range, skating about 22 minutes per game. And just going ahead and looking at his game logs here is what really stood out to me lately. He's not getting a lot of points, but he's giving you a very high floor. 
looking at he give you an assist last game and before that you're looking at the combined shots and blocks he's got seven six eight four six six in the six games prior to that so that's a really high floor if you're starting off at two and a half three DraftKings points are right around six to seven FanDuel points if that's going to be your floor and you're playing against Buffalo at home where you've got that point potential potential as well I think he's just he has to be a core play tonight a couple other defensemen I like tonight Darnell Nurse for Ed, for Edmonton um, again good matchup against Vancouver he provides shots blocks a lot of these guys don't have a shot volume. I'm not going to see that with a forward. So when you see a guy stand out in the 15 plus area, I definitely look. But for a defenseman, you know, 12 to 13 in that shot volume area is about what I'm looking for. He's cheap on both sides. Um, he's skate, you know, he's skating a lot of minutes, 24 plus per game, gives you upside as well. And then Clefbaum hasn't given you as much upside, but on Fanduel he's only 4,300, so 1,200 less than Nurse. So I definitely consider him over there. He's been solid since uh, returning to the lineup as well, um, giving you a, a pretty good floor there. Talk about Travis Hammond quite a bit. Same thing, high floor player. Mostly like him on Fanduel at 4,000 tonight. And then Pareko, I got him in purple here. Um, that's cash game only. Doesn't give you much upside whatsoever. Don't really love the matchup against LA, but he does give you that combination of blocks and shots. And then Essa Lindell um, as uh, the cheapest, kind of the cheapest guy I'm probably going to go tonight. I might look a little bit further and maybe find um, someone a little bit cheaper. You know, in GPPs, I like finding that $2,500 to $3,000 player and go superstars and scrubs. So you can get a Kane Kucherov. Um, and maybe even like, uh, maybe not a Crosby, but like an Eichel in there in a GPP lineup. But Lindell, over his last few games, not a ton of upside, but again, he's given you that combination of shots and blocks, which is giving you a high floor of six, four, only two there, but then six. So um, as you can see, that's giving you a pretty high floor without any scoring at a mid 4K pr price tag. So that pretty much covers my core plays for tonight. I have a look at some of my early GPP stacks. I'm going to have to change the Detroit one with the news that came out just before I started the video um, that Larkin's going to be out tonight, so I'm going to take that one off there. But I do like the Islanders' first line. Very cheap, only 32% um, percent of your total salary cap, 30% on FanDuel. You know, they're all cheap. Nelson, like I said, I'll be using in cash games, pairing him with Bailey and Lee in GPPs. Just an elite matchup. I don't know if they're going to be high-owned with all the other great options out there. There might be some one-offs from the Islanders, so I definitely like them there. One of the higher-owned teams, I talked about quite a few of them already, is Chicago, Kane, Taves, and Debrinkit. Gives you exposure to both of their top two lines as well as their top power play unit. And then I don't mind adding Eric Gustafson as well on defense. He skates on that top power play unit with them as well. So that covers today's video going over the slate. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. We've got more videos coming out. we got the NASCAR post-qualifying picks video coming out either fr late Friday night or early Saturday morning. Make sure to check in on that. We've got uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We've got the uh, NBA with Josh and Justin. And then I'm doing NHL. PGA will be back next week as well. We'll be going over uh, the players. We've got a big tournament there next week. So there's going to be some big contests on FanDuel and DraftKings. So, and if you got any questions about NHL or any DFS sport, Rotor Pros in general, hit me up in the community chat or on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs9 or at Rotor Pros. Thanks for watching. Let's go get some green screens. Good luck, everyone.